What is going on YouTube? In this video, we are going to talk about male leopard geckos and prolapsed hemipenes. I want to take this time to shout out Redline Shipping. They are the number one fastest growing reptile and animal shipping company in the world right now, and that is for good reason. Use promo code GECKO5 today at checkout for an additional $5 off your shipping label. So real quick, the first thing to warn you about prolapsed hemipenes is that they can happen when young males are kept around each other. So we had set up in a little group four male leopard geckos that were growing up together from babies. Now I normally say separate leopard geckos out at the age of three months or younger. But as busy as we are around here, I was a couple weeks late to that. And I would say that these geckos were probably three and a half to four months old. And by then, they're definitely starting to sexually mature. And when a male leopard gecko sexually matures, it's going to avert its hemipenes to scent the cage to try to mark its own territory and maybe even ward off the other males. But in this video, we're actually gonna cover two of my young breeder males that were 55 grams and both of them have a slight prolapse, one a little bit more than the other. And so I'm gonna show you my care routine of how I deal with that and what might help you if you find yourself in a similar scenario. All right guys, so this is the first male that I found yesterday and removed him from his group and found out that he had a little bit of a prolapse hemipene. Now this was a little bit of an experiment for me. You know, I have some younger males this year that I wanted to see if they would breed. Oh, this is the one that is actually a little bit worse than the other one. What makes this prolapse a little bit worse than the other one is that it's just a little bit more out and bigger than the other prolapse, which you will see. The other prolapse, I was able to get to go back in on its own within a month, just treating the gecko in the way that I'm gonna teach you in this video. And this is a really nice gecko, so you can see that's why I wanted to try to get his genes passed on early. Uh, most leopard geckos from this guy's line would probably max out around 70 to 90 grams. And like I said, this guy is only about 55 to 60 grams. So still an adult by the standards of what we consider an adult in the leopard gecko hobby, but still not full grown. And so the fact that this happened twice to me with two younger males probably leads me to the conclusion that I might not want to put my males through this in the future. But again, everything is a learning experience and I was breeding other younger males that did not prolapse. And although I've never had an older male prolapse, I've heard plenty of stories of, you know, stud two, three year old males that are full grown that wind up do prolapsing. So I think it's just a little bit of luck with a little bit of caution. And in this case, I'll be a little bit more cautious in the future to probably let the geckos grow up a little bit more because I think you stand a better chance to avoid the prolapse if the geckos are full size. So one more time, there's the prolapse and it's not swollen or anything like that. There's a little bit of dark red going on there and that could just be from, you know, these guys have nails and stuff and the females have nails and the males have nails and his hemipene could have gotten nicked a little bit during breeding, which could happen to any male. And that might be one reason of why a hemipene would prolapse is if it gets injured during the breeding activity, which can happen to any size male. So this is what I did for him. As soon as I found out he was prolapsed, I cleaned his tub, changed his newspaper to get rid of any bacteria, gave him a fresh food bowl and water dish. And then instead of keeping eco earth or peat moss in here, I folded up two paper towels and it's not slushy water in here, but it is very wet in here so that his hemipene can stay nice and moist. And that will give him the ability to hopefully keep it bacteria and infection free as well as lick it back into himself. Okay, now this is the second boy that has a much less severe prolapse hemipene. And as you can see, another gorgeous Manferno deep carrot tail gecko. And that's why I wanted to breed this guy. This guy actually went through some incubation spikes when he was younger in the incubator. And so you could see he has 
a little bit of underdeveloped eyelids. That should not be genetic and should not pass on. That's just an incubation thing that can happen. Beautiful genetics. This is kind of that classic Charmander look that I really, really love. Let's take a look at him. And there you can see his prolapse is not nearly as bad, nor does it have any dark red areas to it. So that makes me think that it's not really injured. It just kind of got stuck on the way back in. Now this guy is close to full grown. So weighing him, he's 60 grams. Whereas the other one was a little bit smaller, probably at around 55 grams. So he's closer to full grown, but still, I think he's got a little bit of growing left to do. And had I allowed him to do that little bit of growing, would it have made a difference? I don't know. Like I said, I have other younger males that are breeding around this size and they did not prolapse. And then I've seen older males, you know, the normal full grown stud breeder males for people that did prolapse. And so I think it's just a little bit of luck again, combined with a little bit of caution. In this case, the caution is waiting till they're a little bit older to kind of minimize the risk of a potential prolapse or injured hemipene. Now in the wild, these guys would have no way to get this back in except by themselves. In captivity, we can help them a little bit by keeping their cage clean. So you can see a little bit of poo um, right there. I wiped it away yesterday. So this might be like a little new fresh poo or maybe it just didn't completely wipe away. It looks like a little urate right there. But that's what soaking these guys in warm water could do is it will help them not gather any bacteria in that area there to make sure that that area doesn't get infected. Now, leopard geckos, as well as most reptiles, are extremely resilient against infection. However, they're not bulletproof. They're still animals. Bacteria and infection does still exist. So whenever someone comes to me with issues like this, I'm always careful to kind of give them the full scoop on it what I would do in the situation. And then of course, if things get worse and inflammation or swelling does start to happen, then you would absolutely want to take it to a vet and the vet will give you a couple options. They might want to put the animal on antibiotics and or they might want to actually surgically remove the hemipene. Now, leopard geckos as well as snakes have two hemipenes, so they have two reproductive organs, so they could still go on to be a breeder, they'll just be missing that one reproductive organ. But in my experience, if it's just small like this, or even like the first one we saw, I think you should try to at least let the gecko get it back into its body on its own. And you can see here, same setup, very, very clean. Clean this tub good, fresh food, fresh water, two paper towels folded up in there, remove the eco earth, so that no little debris or loose substrate can get stuck on that part for this boy. But look how gorgeous this boy is. See why I wanted to breed him? Now the reason I say you might not want to take it to the vet first is because for the first two boys that I was talking about earlier in this video that prolapsed together in that big tub that I was keeping them in, they both had a prolapse that was very similar to what we saw in the last gecko of this video, where it was not as big or bulbous or round, it wasn't as far out, and there was no dark red blotching or anything like that that could potentially indicate swelling or injury to the hemipene itself. And those two geckos I put through the exact same healing process that I'm showing you here. Clean tub, clean humid hide with no eco earth, just paper towel. And by the way, wash the humid hide out so no little dust or anything is in there. You want your gecko's cage completely dust free if possible. And they both healed 100% fine within the span of about 30 to 45 days I want to say. Both of them had their hemipenes fully retract and one of them is even breeding for me right now and bred for the first time with no issues. And that was a younger male. That male was only around 55 to 60 grams as well and did not have an issue. So was it just bad luck or are the numbers telling me something here? I think I bred six males between the range of 55 to 60 grams and two of those males prolapsed. Is that telling me something? Maybe. Is it just bad luck? 
maybe. You can decide for yourself what is worth it. I will be sure to keep you updated as time goes on with more observations and statistical data that I put together based on breedings and pairings and observations that I make over here so that you can benefit without having to try it yourself. And you could just learn from others like me. So what did you guys think about this video on male hemipene prolapsing? Was it helpful? Was it not helpful? Did I cover all the questions that you could have asked about it? If I did not, leave a question in the comments below so that I can answer it. Once again, guys, we're really, really growing around here. Our Instagram, our YouTube. I really want to start a Patreon so that I could put your little names in a credits reel rolling here in my outros as I speak. I'm not really sure what I would do for a Patreon. It's usually Patreons are started to give you benefit that your other social media sources don't currently give. But you know me, I like to make videos on everything and share that with everybody. And I think that's beneficial for the creator, but it's also beneficial for the audience. So I don't really know. Maybe I'll do a Patreon and certain tiers will have giveaways. Or I was thinking of maybe making business related content on the Patreon only because that's kind of something that you would naturally pay for in real life anyway you know, business counsel, advice, experience, those kinds of things. So I don't know, leave a comment below what you think I should start a Patreon on if I do. And I would love to hear your thoughts about that. Your thoughts always give me ideas of future ways to make this platform more fun, more engaging, and more awesome to promote leopard geckos. So I thank you guys for being here. I'll see you in the next video. And until then, have a geeky gecko, great day. Peace.